Hey guys, it's Jesse from Project FDL. I wanted to make a video today and show you something that I've been working on that I've actually wanted to do for a while with the FDL2, and that is make a web app for it. Now, the original FDL1 was actually on a turret base, and you used a web app to control the turret and to actually fire the blaster as well. Now that the FTL2 is not on the turret base, we kind of don't need the, the web app for the same purpose as the FTL1. The FTL2, being completely designed to be a handheld blaster on the field, actually has some extra features uh, such as rate of fire and burst mode and things like that that the FTL1 didn't have that a web app could actually make use of pretty well. Uh, so first I actually want to talk about what is in the FDL2 and what was in the FDL1 as well, and that is the particle photon. That's this right here. Now I've talked about this before, but this is a microcontroller that's very similar to an Arduino, except that this chip right here on the photon has Wi-Fi built directly into it. So the Wi-Fi allows us to connect the FDL2 to a Wi-Fi network, then using a web page or a web app, uh, not even a native app on your device, but an actual web page, you can control certain operations on the FDL2. So now that a few FDL2s have gone out the door and are in customers' hands, I'm starting to hear feedback and understand the demographic of customer that I have for the FDL2. Um, one of that is a parent who buys an FDL2 and is maybe sharing it with a younger child, you know, somebody 8, 9, 10 years old, where the parent's going to be using it a decent amount of time, um, but sometimes a small child may be using it. In that case, you actually want to cap the velocity that the FDL2 is capable of. Uh, this way you can still use the knobs and whatnot to control the FDL2, but the high speed on it may not be as fast as the FDL2 is capable of. The other situations that a web app might be usable for are fine-tuning the mins and maxes of what these knobs mean um, and adjusting maybe the different number of shots in each, each burst fire. All right, so before we get too far and before I show you the app, I want to show you something on the photon on the back of the blaster. If you normally turn the blaster on, you'll see that this LED on the back of the blaster lights up white and it kind of breathes a little bit. The white means that the program is executing on the photon, um, but it's not currently hooked up to Wi-Fi and it's just kind of running free of Wi-Fi. If we then jump this connector up here, which on the FDL1 there was originally a switch for, and now I assume you may only want to do this occasionally, so it doesn't need to be a switch, you can just kind of jump for it. So as soon as I do that, you can see that the light starts actually flashing green. Flashing green means that it's trying to find a Wi-Fi network. And once it flashes blue quickly and then turns solid but breathing blue, it means that it's actually attached to a, a Wi-Fi network. And just so you know, that Wi-Fi is actually my cell phone right now. I have the FDL2 tethered to the Wi-Fi of my cell phone, and then the cell phone is connected to the Internet through its normal data plant. So this being the case, I could actually do this out in the field where there is not a Wi-Fi network around. Or obviously you could hook it up to your Wi-Fi in your house or wherever you are. Uh, so the web app is very, very much in a prototype stage right now. It is not the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world, but it gets the point across and it'll kind of show you what I'm, what I'm getting at. So when you first start the web app, you're asked to, your username and password. So this actually logs into the particle cloud. So the Photon is technically an Internet of Things device, meaning that it connects to a cloud system um, that is up on the Internet, and all of the Photon devices talk to this same cloud. And then if you want to control the device, you talk to that cloud, which then talks down to the actual Photon device. It's a really, really cool framework that Particle has put together, and it's really exciting. I'm a real, real big fan of the Internet of Things. Um, so technically, an FDL2 is an Internet of Things device. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log in. I'm going to do this off screen because, no offense, I don't want you guys to know my actual email address. So when you log in, what it's actually going to do is reach out to that particle cloud and try to determine all of the devices that you have claimed on that particle cloud. I actually have about five or six different photons and an old core and stuff that don't show up on this list because none of them are actually connected to Wi-Fi at this point in time. 
So this FDL2 and this name could be totally different when you first set up these photons. It's, it tends to give it kind of silly names like mutant turtle or things like that. But I renamed mine. It's just called the FDL2 because this is my FDL2. So if I click on this, it'll actually log into the FDL2 and pull a set of settings off of the FDL2. So what you see when this comes up is actually how the FDL2 is set at this current point in time. Uh, at the very top, there is a checkbox here and it's labeled fixed mode. We will get to fixed mode in a minute and that is another kind of exciting thing that I wanted to show you. Um, but right now what you see is a whole set of different configurations that you can adjust as you will. These come in pairs of two, so there's power low, power high, spin up low, spin up high, rate of fire low, and rate of fire high. So what this means is these are set up into groups of two that coordinate with the low side of the knob and the high side of the knob. So the way the FTL2 is set up right now, the power that this is set to and the spin up are actually tied together on this first knob. So what this is saying when the power, when the knob is turned all the way to the left, all the way down, that coordinates with a power of 55. This 55 is a, is a number in the range between 0 and 180. Uh, the ESCs actually kick on at about 50 to 55 and then on the high side 115 is about as fast as the motors will go. So right now when the power is turned all the way down, uh, the power is at 55. When it's all the way up, it's at 115. And then the spin up is tied to the power too. So when the knob is all the way down, the spin up is at 285 milliseconds before the pusher starts to push the dart. So when it's turned all the way up, the spin up is actually lower because the motors spin up faster when they are set to a higher power. And then when you come down to the rate of fire, uh, the rate of fire low means is a number between 0 and 100, basically 0 and 100%. Turned all the way down is the slowest it will go. Turned all the way up, the highest it will go. So what you can start to do here is you could actually cap the velocity of the FDL2. If you set the high power down to, say, 68, and then we click Update Settings, it's talking out to the FDL2, it said the settings are updated. Now, when you turn the blaster all the way up, it shoots kind of hard. If you turn that then all the way back up to say 120, now when it's turned all the way up, it spins considerably faster. So a couple of the things you could do here, if you have found a power setting that you really like, Say I really like it at 79, right? You could set the high and low, which means it'll always shoot at a power of 79, but then you could make that knob control just the spin up. So you could say, all right, when it's turned all the way down, I want the spin up to be really short. When it's turned all the way up, I want the spin up to be much longer. Uh, this has the potential of getting a little more velocity out of the FDL2. So if we Send those settings out to it. Then when it's turned all the way down, the pusher pushes really quick. If I turn it all the way up, then there's a longer spin up time before the pusher actually pushes. There's a whole lot of different things you can do once you get in here and you start fiddling with numbers a little bit. Um, if you wanted the knobs to turn the opposite direction, say you wanted um, clockwise to actually be turning it down as if you're pulling the knob away from you, uh, then you could switch these and you could say the power low, I want it up at a higher value, and then the power high, I want it at a lower value. That'll effectively reverse the direction that you need to turn the knob. Um, but right now let's talk about fixed mode for a second. So if I click on the fixed mode checkbox, so what this is going to do is it's going to put the FDL2 in a mode where the knobs on the side actually do nothing. You're setting exactly what you want your power and spin up and rate of fire and even the number of shots in your burst. So the purpose of that is this. If I shut down the FDL2, I unplug the trigger and actually pull this board out. I have a little jumper wire that I've made here that I can plug in in replace of the board. 
and then plug the trigger wire into that. Uh, and then I printed off a different cap that could go on here. So I have now officially removed the knobs off the side of the blaster. I'm just going to leave it with the cap off, but you can imagine with the cap on, the FDL2 suddenly becomes uh, holsterable. Before when anybody asked me if the FDL2 could be holstered, I kind of had to say not really because you have knobs on the side and if you put them in a holster the knob position would change and you would get unexpected results. This way if you know how you want to use your FDL2 or if you want to futz with it while you're on the field while it's in Wi-Fi, you can just put the cap on the side and then you don't have to worry about your leg rubbing on the knobs and changing their values or anything. Okay, so now we've got this turned back on again after pulling off the knobs off the side. Uh, and we've switched the app over to the fixed mode. So now we can set the settings that the FDL2 is going to semi-permanently run on right here in the app. So let's say I want to turn it up. I want to shoot it really hard all the time. Uh, and I want a fairly low spin-up. Uh, and then I want my rate of fire at 100%, and I want it to always shoot single shots all the time. So I can say update setting, it's talking out to the FDL2, the settings are updated. There you go. So now let's say I'm in a different situation, let's say I bring this to the office. Uh, I want to turn it down lower. Uh, because it's lower, the motors don't spin up quite as fast, so I want to turn the spin up a little higher. Uh, let's say I don't want to obliterate my coworkers, have them only take a slow stream of darts. Regardless of two, three, however many bursts count, at this point in time you can choose whichever number you want for your burst. I do have this capped at 35 because there is not a single nerf drum available right now that is bigger than 35, but let's say I want to shoot five shot bursts. I can send the settings to the FDL2 and now it is at a moderate speed with a decent sized spin up about half the rate of fire and a five shot burst. There you go. So I think this really opens up the operation of the FDL2 uh, to being very, very flexible. Uh, and there's a lot of things that can be done with this app in the future too. Let's say you wanted to completely change what the knobs actually do. Let's say you wanted the back knob to be your power instead of the front. You know, I can have that done through the app and then tweak the code uh, on the FDL2 a little bit and really make the operation of the blaster as flexible as possible. So, thanks for watching. As always, uh, if you guys are interested in the FDL2 or any of the Project FDL stuff, uh, go to Facebook and search for Project FDL. Uh, like that page, it's where I do most of my announcements all the time. Uh, my shop right now is currently down because I just fulfilled a bunch of pre-orders. I want to exclusively support them for the time being. Um, but I will make an announcement when it's back up on Facebook. Also visit projectfdl.com. And if you would so kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, that'd be awesome.